And the reason that's important is that the American people have no idea, really no idea, about the immensity of the threat in space. And I've made this comment in a classified setting that I wish the American people could be present in this room. Not this room, but the skiff. Because our adversaries know what they are doing. We know what they are doing. They know we know what they are doing. But the American people have no idea. And so this discussion and debate will have very little interest in the American public. It's carried on in a level of, forgive me, bureaucratic language that most Americans would have trouble seeing an immediacy in their daily lives. But if they were privy to what we hear, and you know it much better than we do, because you live it, I think they'd be pretty alarmed. Shalom. Kohlaimla. Yehawah. Bahashem. Yehawah Shai. Bahashem. Reklach Kadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yehawah. In the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you in another lesson. An astonishment is coming to the earth. So we've talked about this astonishment. The light of the world. The glory of the Most High. The Son of the Most High. By the way, we were told that it's not in the Old Testament. We're going to prove that it's absolutely false today. Many people have mocked and scoffed at what we teach. But when the Pentagon has earmarked upwards of $40 billion to the so-called threat from out of space, then people's attention gets tuned in. Now we have your attention. I don't see many mockers and scoffers anymore regarding the so-called UFOs or the chariots of the Lord. Because when you mock and scoff at us, then you're calling all the naval pilots liars. All the Air Force footage, you're denying and dismissing that. The money that's being spent towards the space program, the sixth branch of the U.S. military being created, the United States Space Force. Let's look at this. So these images are just some of the few of what pilots are reporting and seeing. <coughs> So-called UFOs. The Pentagon created a new group to monitor and mitigate the threat from the so-called UFOs. We have taught they are chariots of the Lord, spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 66. See, the New York Times and CNN reported a government assessment on UFOs does not provide evidence of aliens but does not rule the possibility out. So these are angels of the Lord. The Department of Defense is creating a new investigative body 
to track and analyze an unidentified aerial phenomenon. Let's go into the word. So they are identified as chariots of the Lord. Let's go here. I want to start here at the bottom. <clears throat> what is this astonishment? Go to Second Ezra, chapter thirteen. The book of Second Ezra, chapter thirteen. Let's go to verse twenty-nine. Behold. The days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Let's look up this word astonishment. Astonishment. Amaze. Surprise. Shocked. Stupefied. Let's look, wow, look at this one. Dismay. What? Dismay. Dismayed. Consternation. Distress. Great distress is going to come upon the nations, starting with Esau. Let's go to Jeremiah 50 and 36. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 60, verse 36. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dote. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. See? Great fear. Great distress. Let's look at that word, dote. <coughs> they shall dote. Comes from the Hebrew... Strong's age twenty nine seventy three. Yael. Yael. Become foolish. Have you ever seen people so scared they're running and tripping over each other and trampling over one another? That's what's happening. Wicked folly to become fools or foolish. Read that again. Jeremiah 50, verse 36. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dope. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. Let's go here. Obadiah, verse 9. Go to verse 8. Shall I not in that day saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau. And thy mighty men, O Timan, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. See? So he's not coming to play games. The Bible says that the slain of the Lord shall be in that day from one end of heaven or one end of the earth even to the other. Read it again. Obadiah, verse 9. And thy mighty men, O Timan, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Slain of the Lord. I think it's Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25. Let's go to verse 32. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. These chariots are in attack mode, creating tornadoes and massive tempests of fire, debris, and flames of destruction. 
verse 33. That's that whirlwind. Jeremiah 25, verse 33. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, and they shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground like scattered dog poop, dismayed. Let's go back to Second Ezra 13. Let's go to verse 29. <clears throat> Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. Why you think they're standing up a space force? One realm against another. Let's look up that term, realm. Realm. Feel or domain of activity or interest. Look at this. Domain, area controlled, area of territory owned or controlled by a ruler or government. Notice in the video, he mentioned what? The space domain. Zone, here we go. Orbit. Orbit, sphere of activity, interest, or application. That's why they have a space force. Okay, I'm going to keep it moving. Go from there. Let's go to verse 31. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen which I showed thee before, and then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. I thought the son of the Most High was not in the Old Testament. Busted. So he's coming back to bring judgment. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land Lead the battle they have one against another. So the United Nations militaries are going to stop fighting each other. Gog and Magog, that great battle of Armageddon against the European Union and NATO. And they're going to turn to fight Yahweh Shai, the son of the Most High. Go to verse 34. <clears throat> and an innumerable and an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them, willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. That's the United Nations militaries, which is going to include Gog and Magog fighting against Yahweh Shai. So they're going to turn from fighting each other and try to fight our Lord and Savior. Let's 
Go to verse 35. But he shall stand upon the top of the Mount Zion, and Zion shall come and shall be showed to all men, being prepared and built it, like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. They're going to be destroyed with whirlwinds and flames of fire. That's the tempest. Looking like tornadoes, tornadoes of fire. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. Their wicked inventions is their militaries, their technology, and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame, and he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto me. <clears throat> They're going to be destroyed by the word, by Yahweh Shai, which is the law, and by flames of his rebuke. Chariots of the Lord. One moment. And shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame, and he shall destroy them without labor by the law which is like unto me. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. Whom Salmanessah the king of Assyria led away captive. And he carried them over the waters and so came they into another land. So he's standing up for Zion, the Israelites. The elect is going to be gathered together. We're reading about redemption, being saved. So Yahweh Shai is getting ready to crack those skies. Go to 2nd Ezra 7 and 27. 2nd <clears throat> Ezra 7, verse 26. Behold, the time shall come that these tokens which I have told thee shall come to pass, and the bride shall appear, and she coming forth shall be seen that now is withdrawn from the earth. The bridegroom is Yahweh Shai. The daughter of Zion is the bride. The captive daughter of Zion, Israel. Second Ezra 7 and 26. And whatsoever, verse 27, excuse me, and whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders. For my son, Yahweh Shai, shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. So Yahweh Shai came on the earth to die for Israel. He's coming back a second time, pursuant to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. 
So Yahweh Shai is being revealed, coming as an astonishment to those that dwell on the earth. Verse 28, for my son, Yahweh Shai, shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. After these years shall my son Hamashiach die, and all men that have life, and the world shall be turned into the old silence seven days, like as in the former judgments, so that no man shall remain. And after seven days, the world that yet awaketh not shall be raised up, and that shall die that is corrupt. So at, we're reading now about the last trump. Verse 32. And the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her. And so shall the dust, those that dwell in silence, and the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them. Well, the dead in Shai is going to be raised up first, and the dead is going to be judged. Let's close out with Matthew 24. In verse 29, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 39, verse 29, excuse me, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. The rulerships are being thrown down under the international global elite. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So they are afraid. Great distress is going to come upon the earth. Great fear, great tribulation, Jacob's trouble. But Jacob is going to be delivered pursuant to Jeremiah chapter 30. Jacob's trouble, followed by the day of deliverance, the day of the Lord. Let's close out with that again. <clears throat> Matthew 24, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So judgment to the wicked, followed by the other nations, the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even to the other, while simultaneously the elect of Israel, Jacob, is being delivered. The children of Israel, the Israelites, elect, gathered by the angels, are coming back with the chariots, so-called UFOs. So the global elite are going into slavery, Let's go here and close out. How do we know that? Let's go to 2nd Ezra 13 
and 13. Second Edges 13. Let's go to verse 12. Afterward saw I the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him another peaceable multitude. Zion is the peaceable ones. Elect the 12 tribes. Let's go to verse 13. And there came much people unto him, whereof some were glad, some were sorry, and some of them were bound, and other some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awakened and said, Thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning, and hast counted me worthy that thou shouldest receive my prayer. Some were bound. The international bankers, the global elite, the remnant of the residue of the heathen. Edom is going to become a possession. Their land and their bodies that are left over of them. That's why Revelations 13 and 10 says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kill with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So a great astonishment is coming to the earth. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakwa Kadash, Barakatham, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to those brothers doing the work in truth and sincerity, edifying the body and feeding the lambs daily. Much love to the beloved ladies of the hopeful elect of the house of David. Barak thumb. We got next, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and abide Babal. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Shalom.